This video is made possible by CuriosityStream. Watch unlimited documentaries for free for a month at curiositystream.com slash real life lore. What is the longest walkable distance that you can take on Earth? There's a few different possibilities, but for the purpose of this video, I need to make a few clarifications first. We want to find the longest walkable distance between two points on the Earth's surface, and we want to make sure that we're actually walking the entire time and not taking any shortcuts, ferries, or boats across any water. Finally, we need to be able to visualize the walk in Google Maps and have it be capable of feeding us directions during the journey. If Google isn't able to calculate the journey, then it's disqualified. So based on these criteria, the longest route by far that you can calculate inside of Google is a trek from Cape Town, South Africa to Magadan, Russia. Well, more specifically, from this town nearby Cape Town, which is the southernmost point of the African continent. From my own personal research into this, nobody in history has ever before managed to complete this real-life achievement. People have already climbed the tallest mountain, sunk to the deepest part of the ocean, and even landed on the moon, but nobody has ever ever accomplished the longest possible walk. So, what would it actually be like for you if you decided to become the first? Here is a brief overview of both the horrible and amazing things that you would end up experiencing and dealing with. As a brief overview though, the entire journey would span a distance of 23,068 kilometers and feature elevation changes of 123,000 meters and back down again, which is basically like you climbing up Mount Everest and back down again 14 times. If you enter this route into Google yourself, it'll differ slightly from the one that I'm showing you in this video because Google annoyingly always tries to help you out with ferries across the major geographic barriers you'll face along the way like the Zambezi River, the Nile River, the Red Sea, and the Black Sea, but I've manually forced a route that doesn't take any ferries because that isn't walking and that is cheating. So Google estimates a time of completion for my route from start at 4,646 hours or 194 days of continuous non-stop walking. However, that's actually quite a misleading estimate. It's more reasonable to assume that at best, the average person partaking in this journey would probably be more likely to only be capable of walking approximately 20 kilometers per day over an eight hour period each day. If you could manage to keep up that pace continuously every day, it would take you 1,153 days or over three full years to complete the entire journey. And that's assuming that nothing goes wrong to you along the way, which, I mean, if you look back at the map and see some of the places where you'll be going, you probably aren't going to get that lucky. Starting off, you have to walk across the entirety of South Africa, but you avoid all of the really dangerous cities before arriving in Zimbabwe, which is when things may start to get a little sketchy. The crime isn't particularly high in Zimbabwe, but they do have some pretty whack creatures that you should worry about, like the Black Mamba, a snake that can both outrun you and kill you within 20 minutes of a bite if you don't get an anti-venom in time. You have to cross the entire country before you hop over into Mozambique, where you briefly walk across before you enter over into Malawi, which has the ninth highest rate of malaria in the world and you have to walk a decently long way through. The wrong bite from the wrong mosquito at any time that you're here can give you the disease and knock you out of action or possibly even kill you, and it gets worse when you cross through Zambia for a hot minute because Zambia has the sixth highest rate of malaria in the world. Then you cross back into Malawi again for another hot minute before you cross the border into Tanzania, which you also have to hike all the way across until you find yourself entering into the malaria capital of the world, Uganda. If you know the way through, Uganda isn't particularly dangerous, save for having the highest recorded cases of malaria in the world. However, you do have to cross through Murchison Falls National Park, which does have things like hippos, gorillas, and even more black mambas. Quite possibly the sketchiest part of your trip begins, though, when you cross the border into South Sudan, which, oh boy, is considered the third most dangerous country on the entire planet to be in, ahead of even other places like Iraq or Yemen. Armed conflict between opposing political and ethnic groups is ongoing across the country, while carjackings, shootings, ambushes, assaults, robberies, and kidnappings are pretty common occurrences. Even US government employees here have very strict curfews and travel in armored transport carriers for their own safety. You'll definitely have a difficult time walking through here before arriving into regular Sudan, where you have to journey across the Sahara in scorching temperatures of up to 47 degrees Celsius in the summertime before you arrive 
here at Wadi Hafa, right before Egypt. There isn't a single road that connects Sudan with Egypt, which seems like pretty poor planning on their part, so Google wants you to take a ferry across Lake Nasser to Aswan in Egypt. But that is breaking our rules, so you're gonna have to just huff it across the empty Sahara without a road before arriving into Aswan yourself. That's pretty dangerous and you'll probably die, but I mean, you'll probably have died a dozen times before this anyway. So then you walk across basically the entirety of Egypt, cross the Suez Canal Bridge, and walk all the way across the Suez to Jordan while briefly hopping through Israel. Walking through Jordan shouldn't be too bad, but things hop right back into Sketchtown when you enter into Syria. The brutal civil war that has claimed at least half a million lives in the country is still ongoing, and Syria is considered to be the second most dangerous country in the entire world, only behind Afghanistan. So yeah, good luck walking through all of that. This entire thing is starting to seem like suicide, but with extra steps, but things start getting back to normal when you cross through Turkey, then Georgia, and finally into Russia, which is by far the longest part of your journey. You'll have to walk across practically the entire country and walk deep through Siberia, which is so huge, you're guaranteed to be there during the winter at some point. And if you survived everything up to here, it would sure be a shame to just freeze to death near somewhere like Yakutsk, where the average January temperature is negative 39 degrees Celsius. The road from here to Magadan is known as the Road of Bones, after the thousands of gulag laborers who died constructing it under Stalin, and whose bodies were simply mixed in with the very fabric of the road that you're walking across. So if you somehow miraculously survived all of this and you cross this final obstacle into Magadan, congratulations, because you've just done something that nobody else in human history has ever done before. You've completed the longest possible walk between two points on the Earth's surface and it's probably only taken you at least three years of your life to finish. Now, many real-life lore viewers are probably also the type of person who watches and enjoys a lot of documentaries kind of like this. I created real-life lore to make my own documentaries like this one available to watch for free. So if you like good quality documentaries, then you should absolutely be subscribed to Curiosity Stream, And that's because they have a library of over 2,400 documentaries and non-fiction titles that you can watch whenever, wherever. It's available on the web, Apple TV, Roku, Android, iOS, and plenty of other platforms. One series they have that I would highly recommend is Speed with Sean Riley, who looks at the evolution of human-engineered speed across episodes broken up into land, sea, air, and space, and explains the stories behind each of them. This, and the entire rest of Curiosity Stream's library, can be accessed for only $2.99 per month, but if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash reallifelore and use the code reallifelore, you will get your first month free and be able to watch absolutely anything. Thank you for watching.